Sup, Chooms? How's it all hanging? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, today, Chooms, we're going to talk about a very sensitive topic, especially sensitive if you are a male, and that is, does finasteride make your balls hurt? Did you know that those precious jewels that dangle below your John Thomas have an extremely high density of nociceptors, which are pain receptors? That's why it hurts so badly if you get kicked in the nuts or if you do really deep barbell squats when you have a wedgie. Uh. <laughs> there are unfortunately a lot of things that can make our balls hurt, but is finasteride one of them? Surely we don't have to choose between our hair and our testicular comfort, do we? Well, like I always say, this is a science-based channel, so let's look at the evidence. It's time to go balls deep and untuck all the evidence about ball pain from finasteride so that hopefully our balls can breathe easily every time we fight the slaphead curse. Now, I know what some of you haters are thinking right now. Already I can imagine someone writing in the comment section, but Kevin, I already know what you're going to say. You are so pro-finasteride, and so of course you're going to say that finasteride won't hurt your balls. You're clearly so biased, so haha. But surprise, surprise, Chooms, you'd actually be wrong to make that assumption. As a matter of fact, I am convinced that finasteride can cause testicular pain. So let's first see why, and then I'll explain later why it doesn't really matter all that much. First of all, let's start with a package insert for Propecia, which is the brand name for one milligram formulation of finasteride used for treating androgenic alopecia. In the package insert, there is a summary of all the clinical studies that were done in order to get FDA approval for using finasteride in order to treat androgenic alopecia. In these original studies, the incidence of testicular pain was not any different in finasteride-treated patients than in patients on placebo. However, the next paragraph talks about the post-marketing experience with finasteride. It turns out that the post-marketing data actually shows that testicular pain is one of the side effects reported by users after taking finasteride. So where does all this data come from? It comes from something called the F. AERS, that's FAIRS database. FAIR stands for the FDA Adverse Event Reporting System. It is a database where both healthcare providers and patients can record possible adverse effects of a drug. The FDA tracks it to see if there are side effects that weren't detected in the original clinical studies of a drug. It is a system that dates back all the way to the 1960s, but it was revised in 1997 to make it easier to file reports. Coincidentally, perhaps, that is also the year that Propecia was first approved by the FDA for the treatment of androgenic alopecia. Before that, in 1992, Proscar, which is the 5 milligram dose of finasteride, was approved for treating an enlarged prostate, even though many finasteride users, including myself, will use Proscar and cut it into quarters in order to save money. You may be more familiar with a similar database that was brought up in social media a lot during the COVID pandemic. I'm talking about the VAERS database. It uses the same methods as the FAIRS database, but it is limited to possible adverse reactions after using vaccines. It is important important to understand that the reports in both the VAERS and the FAIR system are completely unvalidated. Anyone can report anything they want, and this is not checked by anyone. Also, the reports don't necessarily imply any kind of causation. The VAERS system has been frequently abused in order to spread misinformation about vaccines, with sometimes completely false reports being uploaded to the system. But like hell am I getting into that topic today? But the reason why I bring up the VAERS database is because the FAIRS database has the exact same limitations. There's no doubt that people from the post-finasteride syndrome conspiracy theorist communities who claim to have symptoms caused by finasteride even though they stopped taking the drug five years ago have undoubtedly uploaded a bunch of irrelevant data to the system. When analyzing any database, the results are only as good as the data itself. Garbage in, garbage out. But putting the limitations of the system into context here, let's at least search the database for reports of testicular pain from finasteride usage. Here's the total number of reports of testicular pain from all drugs over all the years the system has been in place, which like I said, is longer than finasteride has been on the market. Well, it looks like finasteride is the reigning champion amongst drugs causing testicular pain, with 632 cases in total. That's 22% of all cases of drug-related testicular pain. It's interesting that dutasteride, which is also a 5 error blocker, only has a total of 38 cases. I know it isn't used as often as finasteride is, but this seems like a bigger difference than I'd expect. This makes me think that there is more stimulus to report finasteride side effects than dutasteride side effects due to the notorious position finasteride holds 
amongst the new age alt-right conspiracy theorists in the online manosphere of internet tough guys and dude bros. So 632 cases of, of testicular pain, that may seem like a lot, but overall there are over 28 million reports of adverse reactions to drugs in the FAIRS database. So maybe it's not all that many cases when put into that perspective. The FAIRS website lets us look at the number of cases per year. Last year, meaning in the year 2023, there were a total of 56 reports of testicular pain in people taking finasteride. If you look at 10 years before that in 2013, there were just 21 cases. Both years though, finasteride had the most cases of testicular pain of all the drugs in the database. So I'm sure not every case of testicular pain gets reported in this database, and also maybe some of these cases aren't really related to finasteride at all, but I nevertheless still think the data here is pretty consistent. It does seem like finasteride can cause ball pain, though it still does seem to be a pretty rare side effect. It is interesting to see what else is on the list though. The third runner up is testosterone. I guess I could see that since exogenous testosterone use can suppress your endocrine system, which is why steroid users use HCG. So let's keep looking here. Hmm. Well, further down the list is another popular subject in the Hair Cafe cinematic universe, minoxidil. I have seen some forum posts where people claim to have ball pain from minoxidil use, but that's far enough down the list that I'm skeptical as to whether it is a real side effect or not. After all, minoxidil doesn't work through a hormonal mechanism. It is just a general growth stimulant, and it will even work for causes of hair loss that aren't related to androgenic alopecia. But that really begs the question, what actually causes the ball pain in finasteride users? As far as I can tell, there has been no research on what could be causing this ball pain in finasteride users. In fact, there's very little research on how any drug could cause ball, ball pain at all. The one exception, though, is statin drugs. If you look at a list of drugs that are felt to cause testicular pain, one of the types of drugs mentioned is statin drugs, which are used to treat high cholesterol levels. Apparently, the idea that statin drugs can cause testicular pain comes from a single case report published in 2007, specifically this one here. In the report, a 54-year-old man started and stopped two different statin drugs, and each time he experienced pain in his testicle, which increased when sitting or driving or when wearing tight clothing. The pain resolved each time he stopped the statin drug. So, in this specific case, it looks like the statin drugs caused testicular pain. However, the authors of the case report couldn't come up with a clear explanation for the causation of of the pain. They speculated that statins might affect steroid synthesis in the testes, which would affect testosterone levels, and that somehow led to the testicular pain. I initially dismissed this case as bogus, but upon further examination, it actually makes sense if you consider the possibility that testosterone itself can cause ball pain. Based on the FAIRS database, maybe it really does. It looks like exogenous testosterone causes ball pain as a side effect in the database. Now, I don't know if the men experience ball pain from testosterone or just men with low testosterone levels who are receiving testosterone replacement therapy, or if they're getting megadoses of androgenic steroids for ergogenic performance benefits, like for bodybuilding. We know that people who are on high doses of anabolic androgenic steroids, and even some people who are on lower doses for testosterone replacement therapy, will sometimes have shrinkage of their testicles. This is because taking testosterone that your body isn't producing naturally will depress the secretion of the hormone gonadotropin from the hypothalamus, which will then decrease the secretion of luteinizing hormone from the the pituitary gland. Luteinizing hormone stimulates testosterone secretion in the testicles, so large doses of testosterone will cause less testosterone secretion and less sperm production and then ball shrinkage. We know that finasteride increases testosterone levels by about 10%, but unlike with exogenous steroid use, the increase in testosterone levels from finasteride is endogenous, not exogenous. So is a 10% increase in testosterone levels from finasteride use enough to suppress the hypothalamic pituitary axis and suppress testosterone formation in the testicles? Well, the research shows that the answer is no. How do I know this? Well, this data comes from a source most unexpected. It turns out that our good friend Dr. Trash, before he turned to the dark side, published a fairly unbiased article reviewing the effects of finasteride on serum hormone levels. In this table from the article, Dr. Trash summarizes all the studies that looked at the effects of finasteride and dutasteride on the levels of luteinizing hormone, as well as another pituitary hormone called follicle-stimulating hormone, otherwise known as LH and FSH. All the studies except for one showed either no effect from finasteride and dutasteride on these hormones, or even a slight rise in the hormones. Only one study showed a decrease in these hormones. 
So there is no evidence that the increase in testosterone levels from finasteride suppresses the hypothalamic pituitary axis or would shrink your balls. The next question is whether finasteride affects sperm production, which might be another mechanism for causing the pain in your testicles. The best study we have on the effects of finasteride on sperm production is this one here from 1999. This was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial looking at the effect of one milligram per day of finasteride on fertility. Fortunately, there were no effects on sperm production or sperm function. Another study from 2007 looked at five milligrams of finasteride or 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride and found mildly decreased semen parameters, but on the contrary, a study from 1992 found no effect of five milligrams of finasteride on sperm production. There have been some case reports and retrospective studies studies suggesting sperm function might improve after stopping finasteride in some people who have pre-existing infertility problems. That does suggest that finasteride might have some impact on sperm production or sperm function, but that is only if you have borderline sperm parameter problems to begin with. But there is no evidence that the small increase in testosterone levels from finasteride will shrink your balls or make you infertile, and I went over all this in detail in my video on finasteride and fertility, which I'll link below. So based on all the data, it is possible that small fluctuations in testosterone levels from being on finasteride might affect sperm production and cause ball pain. But honestly, this is just pure speculation and no one really knows for sure what is actually causing it. If it is related to fluctuating hormone levels, this would be the same mechanism that causes other finasteride side effects. I talked in great detail about the mechanisms behind finasteride side effects in my video on what to do if you get side effects from finasteride. And I'll go ahead and link that below if you have any questions about finasteride side effects. Anyways, the bottom line is is that the answer is yes. I am convinced that finasteride does very rarely cause testicular discomfort in some men, but the mechanism as to why it happens, it's officially unknown as of today. But if it does happen, then what should you do about it? Well, first of all, if you do get pain in your testicles, don't immediately assume it's from finasteride. A lot of people assume that anything bad that happens to them while they're on finasteride is because of finasteride, but that is just fallacious. In the case of ball pain, it turns out that there are a lot of things that can make our balls uncomfortable. Fortunately, most of these things are not very serious, but unfortunately, some of them actually are really serious. For example, here's the Cleveland Clinic website on testicular pain. If we scroll through this website, we see that there are a lot of causes of testicular pain, including kidney stones, injuries, sexually transmitted diseases, infections, hydrocelis, and testicular torsion, or possibly even cancer. One thing that's very important to remember is that if the pain is just in one testicle, then it's not going to be from finasteride. It could be something more serious like hydrocelis or even a tumor. If the pain is persistent or severe or just coming from one testicle, you definitely need to get it checked out by a doctor as soon as possible. However, if it turns out the pain is from finasteride, it is reasonable to just wait it out, particularly if the pain is mild. Other sides of finasteride often subside after the first few months or year of treatment, and it's likely testicular pain would subside as well. Another option is to simply just titrate down your dose of finasteride. Titrate Titrating down the dose will still give you plenty of DHT suppression, and it might be just enough to decrease the elevated testosterone levels and relieve the testicular pain. It's worth a try, especially since finasteride is not a very dose-dependent drug. It can be used effectively in doses as low as just 0.1 milligram per day. And I talk about all that in my optimal dose of finasteride video, which is linked below. So even though finasteride isn't a very dose-dependent drug, the most well-researched and effective dose is still one milligram used per day. So that is the dose you should probably start at. There's no point in starting from a position of compromise, even if it is just a slight position of compromise. Use one milligram of finasteride daily and titrate down only if you need to. Remember, side effects will usually go away on their own with continued use. So if you get side effects like testicular pain or anything else, at least consider muscling through them for a few months before considering titrating down. Ultimately though, you might have to decide if it's worth stopping finasteride and losing your hair versus tolerating just a little temporary discomfort. Personally speaking, even if I were to get slight testicular discomfort from taking finasteride, that wouldn't be nearly as painful as the testicular discomfort I'd get from having to live the rest of my life as a terminally online, blue-pilled, blue-balled, friend-zoned slaphead who has to hatfish loose women on Tinder in hopes of getting a pity fuck just once or twice per decade. But that's just me. Anyways, I'll be back with more content soon. Thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. God bless.